Okay. This meeting is being recorded. All right, we're gonna go over. Can you guys? Let's see here. There we go. All right, you guys see the screen? Yep. Okay. I can see it. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna go over our offensive game model, but just an introduction of it. But first, we're gonna go over just general offensive principles before we dive into our specific ones, because that will keep us grounded in universal principles that are used throughout the soccer world. So universal principles, um, what we're gonna, we're gonna cover is principles of attack and transition to attack. Um, we're not gonna do defense right now that what that means is when they're universal is that no matter what system you run, these principles will hold true with like very few exceptions. Um, you'll see that these, these will be used in any system in the world. Um, and that's why we're going to, we're going to touch on those first before we cover the things that where our system has different principles than other, other systems. So, here are the offensive principles of play that are understood to be universal throughout every country, every club has these principles. The first for me being penetration. I put that at the top because everything leads to being able to penetrate. Um, why do we have depth to eventually get the ball forward, right? To get a shot on goal. Why do we have width? Spread the field so we can penetrate. Why do we rotate so we can penetrate? Why do we dribble so we can get, get by somebody to penetrate, right? Um, so for me, everything goes, I put penetration at the top. Not everybody does, but I do. And other people do as well. So I put it at the top to keep us, again, grounded that all these other principles, okay, you see my mouse? are to get penetration. That's my philosophy, okay? So I think someone's mic's on. So a quick side note, we put creativity last. Um, some players will jump right to creativity before they use the other principles, which are easier to use, not necessarily easier, but like safer. Um, when, and so you'll see that player that just automatically dribbles when something simpler um, could have been used, like some kind of mo mobility or just providing width, depth, support. So we want to, that's one of the things we want to avoid is not jumping right to creativity. We want to use creativity, but we want to use it when we've exhausted the other possibilities. So I'm going to cover each principle in order because again, like I said, there is an order to them. Um, and I, that's why I put creativity last because it's, for me, it's the last resort um, when you can't do something simpler. It doesn't mean you can't use creativity anytime. Of course you can. So let me skip that, sorry. Um, penetration. The goal in soccer is to score more goals than the opponent. That's how you get a win. So to do that, you have to penetrate their lines. You have to get behind them. You know, as you're taking a shot from outside the box, you have to somehow get behind the defense to score a goal. The most valuable places to receive the ball. It's important that we all at least mostly agree on this is behind the center backs. Behind the center backs gives you, in general, the best chance of scoring a goal because generally the goal is where? Behind the center backs, right? So we have to, we have to agree on these certain principles or else we're all going to be speaking a different language. So – yeah, you can get the ball beyond the fullbacks, but can you score from there with a shot? No, it, it's going to take an extra play. But if you get the ball beyond the center backs, and not just the ball, we mean we mean someone recovers the ball from our team there. 
is what we mean by these. So someone having the ball behind the center backs can shoot. Someone behind the fullbacks can then make a pass, a nice cross across that someone can shoot. The third best place is in front of the center backs. So you haven't broken the final line. You haven't broken their back line, but you can um, now play a through ball. You're close enough to play a, a through ball through their back line. You're not, you're not multiple lines away. You're right there. You can just play the ball right through. Then be, be in front of the fullbacks. You've broken the midfield line. If you're in front of the fullbacks, you've broken the midfield line, just like you would have if you're in front of the center backs. But it's clearly not as valuable as being in front of the center backs. That's more valuable, being in the middle of the pitch, ready to break the last line. Then after that, being in the middle in front of the midfield. So you've broken the striker line. You've broken the line of the 9-10. That's the next, val next valuable piece of real estate. Um, notice we're not picking a part of the pitch per se. We're talking about a typical defense that has three lines of defense, a back line, a midfield line, and then a, and then a frontal defense. This is how we're breaking it down. Um, and then the next valuable spot will be in front of the forwards. And then after that, you're just basically your center backs have it um, or your goalie has it in, on the other side of the strikers, right? You haven't even broken the striker line, the striker line yet of the nine and ten. So does that make sense there? Does everybody kind of agree with that? Is there any questions on that? We're pretty good, pretty good there. And it's important to understand these because it's gonna it's gonna guide us on 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 where it, it helps us with nonverbal communication that we understand where the most valuable real estate is on the pitch. So then we 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 try to focus our attention to get the ball there to receive the ball there, a player will make a run to that spot, knowing it's more valuable, okay? Support was the next one here, right? After penetration support. It's very important that we support the ball in the immediate ball area, or we will lose it. If you don't have support in the ball area and the guy gets pressed without making a long pass, he might just, he might just lose the ball. So you have to support the ball area. For me, You've heard me talk about this, diamonds. You set up diamonds and you always should have support behind the ball, no matter what. That could be a center, usually a center back providing, coming behind the ball to provide support. But you want to support, generally in soccer, becomes in the form of triangles or diamonds. You know, it's tri they talk about triangles, but a, tr a, tr a diamond is just a triangle with the, with the top. Okay, so we try to make these diamonds throughout the pitch we'll look at we'll look at pictures of that in a second but you've all know what a diamond is all right in soccer like a full thing picture of 4v2 and there's diamonds all over the pitch you've seen diagrams of that um it's very important that we quickly form diamonds for the ball carrier or we will lose the ball think about what the alternatives are a straight line instead of a diamond how are you gonna how, now everyone's blocking everyone else's passing line so diamonds provide passing options on both sides at a diagonal and then a top to get the ball to, to break the line, okay? So it's very important that you quickly form a diamond in the ball area. That will help us possess the ball. All the good possession teams do that. The teams that don't try to do that generally play long all the time. Because they there's no they don't need they don't need to set up a diamond they're just trying to they're just trying to get the ball and launch it and run on it. Okay, so then the next one would be um, depth. You cannot depth that means like someone high up on their back line. You can't send a penetrative ball to someone who doesn't doesn't exist up there. So this is a quick one. You clearly need to uh, have somebody up there. It also has the dual purpose of stretching the field vertically up and down, goal to goal, which can create space in between for us to then exploit. So if, if they play a high line, we can, we, can, we can exploit them to the space beyond, 
But if they drop the line because of our depth, because we've sent balls over the top and we had depth, then they, they'll, they'll drop the line and then it stretches them vertically and we can exploit them in the middle. So I hope that makes sense too. And then there's width. So for me, depth comes before width because you could have all the width you want, but then if you don't have depth, you're never going to go forward. So first you need, you, you definitely need depth. And then you could, you could get away sometimes with just depth and not, te- not have width. Usually maybe during the transition, um, you can't always get width right away because you're in a defensive shape. So you, you then have to, um, but if you have depth, you can, you can send the ball over the top and not turn it over. Right. And get a scoring chance. But during the transition to attack, you want to, you want to, you want to get with, and you want to open into a possessive shape. So these are important principles that we need to follow. Not every team uses width on both sides, but they do use width. Like Leeds now only uses generally width on one side, the current iteration of Leeds. The iteration that we study uh, used it on both sides. Um, mobility. We've talked about this before. Rotations, right? Exchanging positions is a, is a form of rotation, right? Making a run, that's mobility, right? Making a run. Tra- making a run, flat run, diagonal run, straight run to a diagonal ball. These are mobility, right? Uh, forming a diamond is the act of doing it is, is mobility. You're moving, right? Getting wide is a form of mobility, right? You're moving out wide, how quickly you do it, right? So you need mobility. The reason it's towards the bottom is if you have everything else, you're already in position, you don't you don't need to move. Sometimes you don't need to move at all. You're already in a good spot. You don't just run the run. What's that? I think the quote from Cruyff is, they said, uh, this guy, they told him when they started tracking how far players ran, and they told Cruyff, uh, this player ran like, 11 kilometers or something. And they're like, oh, really? He must be terrible. You know, and obviously the point was that he was just running around the run. Like, if you're already in a good spot, stay there. I tell you guys all the time when you, when you have the ball, play from the spot. You don't have to dribble and close your space, own space down. Okay? Play calmer. All right? And then finally, creativity. That's usually thought of as dribbling, but it could be a very insightful pass a pass that only the very creative players even see or the run that only a very creative player sees that's not in the blueprint, not in the tactical plan, but he sees it, he or she sees it. This is creativity. So um, a lot lot of times it has to be used in the final third to break down a deep block. Um, We don't, we're not getting a ton of deep blocks yet. That's when creativity comes in. You know, Man City has used creativity all the time to break a deep block, but we're, we're not at that. We don't need it as much. We use it. We try to use creativity too much right now. That's n- generally the, the place where creativity is in the final third. Not necessarily. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist in the other places. It does. But you can you can build out of your own third and the middle third with the other principles, rotations with depth support making diamonds you can build out just by using basic principles of soccer um, if you stick to them okay does that make sense everybody any question on the because you know we can always watch this again but any general questions on on those principles that all make sense basically yep someone answer me so we can move on okay Superiority. And you, we want to gain superiority around the ball. Or maybe you want to have superiority. To be a more advanced topic would be have superiority off the ball and then send the ball there, right? Which would then have us have superiority uh, where the ball is. But right now we want to have superiority in the ball zone. Right, where the zone the ball's in, the area to pitch the ball's in, we want to have superiority. S- superiority means we have an advantage. We want to have an advantage around the ball, right? 
there are three types of superiority. It's important that we understand all three because any of them can be used as a weapon for us. Any of these three types can get us what we want, which is goals. There's numerical superiority. Very simple. Numerical superiority is what? What do you, you take a guess? What do you think it is? Come on, guys. I can talk to myself. I'm a teacher, but it's not good. Can you guys hear me? Numerical? Yeah, what is numerical superiority? What does it mean? What do you think it means? It's like having more players than the other team in a given area. That's it. There you go. So, Luke, you're going to be the first person because I want to keep it moving so the video is not super long. Okay? Numerical superiority. Having more players in the ball area. That's great definition by Luke. That, that's exactly what it is. We, if we, when we do rondos, right, a 4v2 is easier than 3v3, correct? Obviously, right? If we can get 4v2 in an area, we have four, they have two. We have an advantage. We can get 3v2. That's easier than 2v2 for us, right? Positional superiority. Picture a, a rondo. If you want, I can show you real quick. This would be like an example of positional superiority. Let me move these guys around. Let's say we're blue. All right. And positional superiority could simply be this. In the ball zone, let's even take this guy away. Let's say he's like out of the play. In this zone right here, let's say we're counting this as the ball zone. Okay. Because he can split them. Do we have numerical superiority inside here? Yes or no? Inside the yellow? Yes or no? No. No. Do we have qualitative, which I'll get to in a second, which is our, our, our players are better, our player is better than their player, or our players are better than their players in that area. That's what qualitative means. Like we're actually more talented, faster, bigger, stronger, uh, smarter, et cetera. So we have no way of knowing that clearly, right? They're just little dots on the screen. So we don't even know if we do. We would have no way of knowing that. But do we have positional superiority right now? Anybody tell me? Yes. Because you have a clear yeah. line to pass the ball. There you go. Okay. They could gain it back by doing what? This, right? By closing now the they have positional superiority, right? They've closed the space. They've closed the passing lane. Right, they've closed the split. Okay, so a lot of this, these principles can be used in, in rondos. Right? Okay, make sense? Yes, that's an example of positional, a simple example of positional superiority. Okay. Another example could just simply be this: take the ten out of it, and just simply put him here. And let's say he's pressing from here, and this guy's here. Is this positional superiority? Oh, let me put him inside the box. Is this positional superiority? Yes. 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 Why? Same, same as before. You have like a clear open space to pass the ball in between. Correct. Um, you win. There you go. Very good, Rodrigo. Exactly. So we can gain, even when it's 2v2, we can gain positional superiority um, just by our movements, by intelligent movements. Okay. All right. So. Um, and qualitative, I already touched on that. That literally means Rodrigo is better. Rodrigo's playing, um, you know, winger, and he's better than their fullback. We want to get Rodrigo the ball to take that guy on 1v1 because Rodrigo has qualitative superiority over the guy. That's, that's, that, could give us, that gives us superiority. Get the ball to Rodrigo. In, in, in professional soccer, it could be like, get the ball to Neymar to go against a bad defender. Isolate Neymar with a bad defender, 1v1. We have qualitative superiority. Numerical, numerically equal, 1v1 Neymar. Um, positionally, maybe the guy's goal side, so Neymar does not have um, positional superiority, 
but he has qualitative superiority. So we get Neymar the ball. Make sense? We will, when we talk tactics on offense, we're going to be spending a lot of time on offense as the year progresses. Um, we're going to fall back on these principles. Did we use, which, which, which superiority were we trying to get in a given situation? Right? Make sense? Is that good, guys? Is that good? Do we follow? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. All right. Um, phases of the game. Damn, we're doing a PowerPoint. We're doing PowerPoint, Marcel. That's what's up. I, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a master. I'm a, I have a teacher with a master's degree, Marcel, as I always tell Gian, which means I am a master teacher. I can use PowerPoint. Wasn't it like some random ass university in like like an online school or something like that? That is, that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was started by George. Why do you have to do him like that? I think, I think, no, because he always does people like that. He's always making fun of kids from going to public school. So, you know, it's his turn to get. Boy, that, yeah, that's true. I love that's it. True. I love it. <laughs> well, call, I think it was started by George W. Bush, that, that titan of education. So. Um, hey, what comes around goes around. When I dish it out, I got to be able to take it. Very good, Marcel. Um, phases of the game. We are not going to cover transition to defense or defense because we are focusing on offense right now. Doesn't mean we won't spray in a little defense here and there when it's appropriate and it, when it ties into our offensive uh, uh, game model. So does everybody understand how these phases of the game work? So they're like a circle kind of. So think of it like, we're in attack. We lose the ball. We're doing what? When we lose the ball, we tra we do what? We transition to defense. Defense, right? We gain the ball. I'm sorry. We we transition to defense, and then we're now once we transition Defended. to defense, we're now, we're now on defense, right? We we win the ball from defense, and now we're transitioning to attack. attack. And then once we transition to attack, we are now attacking. Attack. And then we we lose the ball because um, um, you know someone messed up. Whatever, who cares? Right. We then transition to defense. Make sense? Okay. So, but it's important to understand this: that these are the four phases or states, if you will, we can be in in the game. Not counting like special kicks and things like that. We treat those separately. So in the, in the open play, these are the four phases we can be in. And each one has um, its own distinct um, variables and tactics we need to be aware of, all right? So um, the primary objective of the transition to attack, as well as attack, for me, is to, is to penetrate. Even... We talked about an attack, the primary principle of offense is to, is to penetrate, but shouldn't it be the same thing? Let's say you're in a bad offensive shape when you're transitioning, but you have an opportunity to send a through ball for a breakaway. Do you, does that player transition to with, or does he, do we try to penetrate? Of course we try to penetrate, right? So we always look to penetrate first. And then if we can't, you'll see we fall back on the other. What's missing is what we'll fall back on, what is missing. And then we, okay, if we can't penetrate, we must understand that the tra transition to attack requires rapid movement sometimes to quickly get in our offensive possession shape. So if we can't go forward, as our, well, that's the first thing we want to try to do is go forward successfully, break lines. If we can't do that. We're opening the pitch up. We're getting with. Maybe we couldn't go forward because we didn't have depth. We're now getting depth. Okay. We have those things. And then we realize nobody's still open. So we need, we need mobility to drag someone out of position. So we use the principle of. Right. We can't penetrate. We quickly get support around the ball. We get depth, we get width, we have all that. We still can't penetrate. So someone, we rotate. Jace, our six is covered, he rotates out and the eight checks in. And now we can penetrate, okay? We try to avoid creativity. This is what you guys call 
when we yell at guys, stop dribbling out of the back. Stop dribbling when you don't need to. That's the last resort when we're building out of the back and we're, we're in the middle third. We should lose that as the last resort. We should we should use that when we've exhausted all the other possibilities. Maybe nobody's open and you just have to dribble to keep the ball. Okay? Because, all right. So I hope that helps there. Um, that's all I have for, I just wanted to cover that so people can watch this video later and see the basic principles of offense and the phases of the game and how, and the different types of creative of, of superiority so that we can, we can fall back on those. So um, there's no major questions on that. I'm going to stop the recording and then I'm going to record the next part so we can keep these things separate. Sound good? Does anybody have a question right there? Are we pretty good with that? Good. All right. So let me stop that.